Praise God. Praise God. You doing one more? You doing one more? Two no, more? No, no. Three more? Mm -mm. Not after that one, Pastor. <laughs> you give up? Ooh, I was praising him. Thank you, Jesus. While we're standing, my God. It's the blood. It's that blood. Oh, Jesus. If you have a need in here today, you got a God. you got a God. I'll come back to it maybe in a while. But Isaiah 53 is a prophecy of Jesus Christ, the one who we're celebrating today. And not just because it's Palm Sunday and we're coming into a Good Friday and we've got Easter Sunday with, I have a feeling I know what that's all about. But Isaiah prophesied about him. He said he is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our basis from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely, surely, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God. That means in, it, it, it says we ignorantly assumed that he was stricken, struck down by God, degraded and humiliated by him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. My transgressions. Transgressions is too nice a word. He was wounded for my sin. My lawlessness. My self-centeredness. My pride. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace. Amplified says that the punishment required for our well-being fell on Him. And by His stripes we are healed. He says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to His own way. Oh, we have. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He's a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Where's the grief in your life right now? Where's the sorrow in your life right now? Where's the pain in your life right now? There's not a human being breathing on this earth that does not have sorrow, grief, pain. We're in here right now. We have just exalted Him by the songs and the Spirit. You see, God met us here. He was waiting for us to come. He didn't wait. Yeah, we didn't just he walk in suddenly. He's been here. And as, as, as we began to offer that spirit of praise and worship, He's right here. Here, real, and now for us. So whatever it is you have a need of in your life, right now, I want you just to offer it up to Him as a sacrifice. I want you to literally take it and picture it in your mind. Close your eyes right now, but picture it in your hands. And I want you to look up. Just like a little child looks up and it says, Here, Daddy, my toy's broken. This thing of mine is broken, Daddy. Can you fix it? Because He's not a God who's afar off. It says He is a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He knows your grief. He's felt your grief. He's experienced your pain. He's experienced your sorrow. He's experienced everything you have. He's never sinned. And He's here in this place right now to touch you and to meet you where you are. So let's bring that to Him right now. Before we do, if we do nothing else today, this is the will of God for each one of us right now. Let's lift it. Lord Jesus, we come before You today. Oh, good Father. We stand in Your awesome presence. Humbly come before You right now. 
acknowledging our unworthiness to ever stand before you, but your love has drawn us and accepted us and called us to be with you and made the way that we could be with you. So, Father, I come to you right now and I bring you my life, every hurt, every pain, every need, and I give it to you. Because I know you know me. You care about me. You've, you've, you've grieved with me. You've wept with me. You've sorrowed with me. You've, you've hurt with me. So I bring it to you because you are my everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on every breathing soul in this place right now. That you would touch and heal and deliver and bring hope and bring peace and bring joy and bring, bring hope of life right now. God, we thank You for Your goodness, for Your presence, for Your power. God, we receive You. We receive You into our hearts, our lives, our very being right now. For You are good. There's never a time where you've not been good. There's never been a time where you haven't been faithful. There's never been a time that you haven't had what's best for me. In all things. Father, we love you. We love you. And we yield ourselves to you today. God, bring our thoughts, our hearts, our minds into captivity to the obedience of your word today. And we join together right now and cast down every, every lie of Satan that would try to, to hinder the flow of your word, your voice into our hearts. We cast down every imagination, every high thing of darkness that would try to exalt itself against the knowledge of you. Bring us to that place today, God. We love you. We receive You fresh and new right now. We receive the power of Your Spirit fresh and new right now. I receive my healing, my hope, my joy. Oh, God. My direction from You. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Pastor Cindy, would you come wherever you are? Hopefully you're in here. Somewhere. You're here. Come. Do your thing. Good morning, everybody. I feel like we could probably just pack up the building now. Right? I was charging people. I was charging people. I was charging people. I was charging people. And I'm just up here for some measly old announcements. So just bear with me. Um, when you came in, you probably saw some of these in the lobby. So today, we've been collecting candy for the last month. And today is April 10th, so a bunch of us are going to stay after and stuff Easter eggs. Um, if you would love to stay out here and stuff Easter eggs and eat pizza with us, we would gladly have you do that. Um, but if you could not, we have pre-made some little bags that are in the lobby. They have a little Easter invitation on the front, and inside there are some Easter eggs. So this is our fun, exciting way to invite people to church instead of just saying, hey, come to church. So. Take as many as you would like to take, and I mean that when I say as many as you would like to take, because we still have probably 500 or 600 or 1,000 eggs in the back of you. Yeah. Uh, so literally, if you work in a building and there are 10 employees, please take one for every employee. Yeah. And if you run out and you want more, the food pantry is here Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 to 1. You can come and get some more. So, um, you just find your happy little self, however you would like to get these invitations, and you give them out and invite people. Amen. There's also just a couple of the cars laying in there. If you don't want to give somebody eggs, that's fine. Um, if you're a sour kid, there are <laughs> cars, and you can just take cars. So either way, we got you covered. If you would like to stay after, we would greatly appreciate it. We're going to be stuffing the eggs. Um, and our plan with this is just, like I said, a fun way to invite people to Easter. Not all the eggs are going to be in bags. Some of them are just going to be individual, and they're going to have a piece of paper in there. Miss Jody is very crafty. And there's a piece of paper in there with a QR code. Is that what that's called? And you scan it, and it tells you where our website is. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. fancy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we're not that fancy, but Joe is. So anyway, been, so if you would like to just sprinkle them throughout your neighborhood and let people have an Easter egg hunt in your neighborhood, 
That's another way to invite them because there's going to be a little piece of paper in those eggs as an invitation. So we got you covered. Um, uh, April 20th, we're going to have a night of a, a service, a midweek service. We did a for a really, really long time, and then COVID came and all that fun stuff. So we are going to start back and do one service a month, Yay! and we are going to do one April 20th, and I believe the next one's going to be May 18th. That's so tempting. But April 20th, please come again. Yeah, yeah. And if you got kids, you're welcome to. We're going to watch movies and eat popcorn. Y'all can't come back though. That's just so good. Um, <laughs> and then and the last thing is Friday, which is Good Friday. Father's Tabernacle is having a worship night, and they are just extending it to all churches. So they wanted us to let you all know that everyone is welcome to come for Good Friday as a worship night, and I believe it starts at 5:30. If I'm wrong, then that means we take all the church. But I think it's 5:30. All right. And it's a new building, and it's. Uh, right across from White mm -hmm. in Mans Harbor. So they moved. So they're right there in Mans Harbor now. So a little bit closer to it. All right? Yay! Yay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you can make that, that's going to be an awesome time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. How many of you um, joined together with uh, Manio Faith Church a couple years ago? We did a Good Friday thing. So some of you were there. We had a great time with that. We had, it was a neat time. And any time you get people to join together, it's, uh, it's a good time. So we're planning on being there just to worship. Pastor Dwayne is, is just an awesome man of God. And his wife and uh, Pastor Aaron and the whole crew they have there. And yes, they are, they are, they're not in East Lakes. So you don't have to drive like halfway to Arizona to get there. Yeah, it's amazing how far some people think. We got folks drove all the way from Stumpy Point here this morning, okay? Woo, yeah. And some, right here, you think that's a long way. So, yeah, Deb and I went out to, uh, out south of Raleigh, a town called Clayton, uh, last night, and left there at 9, got home at midnight, and you, you realize this place is out in the middle of nowhere. It is flat out in the middle of nowhere, especially once you turn off a, you know, off of the, you know, the 64, 17 thing at Williamson, and then you get on that long stretch. Go through the big thriving metropolis of Plymouth in Columbia. <laughs> at midnight, it's a, it's a hopping place. Praise God. Praise God. Put up that uh, little thing from last week, if you would, from your pastor. Okay, that up there? This was your pastor last week. Should never nap, rest, or sleep in the spiritual. We should always be woke. Pastor Emeritus, the senior, most reverend, righteous, Frank Glass. So, I tell you what, this is a blessed church. This is a blessed church. And we are, my wife and I and family, we are blessed people to be just connected with you guys in a way because messages like last Sunday were, were, were awesome. Challenging, convicting, yeah. Yeah. but without, you see, it can be conviction, there's got to be hope. And, you know, <clears throat> it's easy in the flesh to come up and beat the sheep. It's easy to do. I've never seen your pastor do that. At least you don't recognize it. It's kind of one of those, you know, velvet hammers where it doesn't really hurt so much, but you kind of like, wow, oh, that, that hurts a little bit, but I, you know what? It's good for me. And uh, we're, gonna, we're actually going to kind of take off from that a little bit last week and continue here. Because the Lord's speaking. You know, God doesn't just all of a sudden toss out. It isn't like pulling into a grab bag of candy and like, okay, what do I got? Right, I got M&M's. Ah, I got sweet tarts. Yeah, I got those Rollo things. Like, who eats those? Yeah. You know, those those things. You know, no. The Lord speaks, and 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 very often there's a a flow to what He's doing, and that's why I made sure I I, I listened to last week, because uh, I would try to be. Last week, my wife and I went to uh, Deb. We went to uh, uh, listen to a friend of ours preach at uh, another local church here. So. Uh, but I try to be in tune with what the Lord is saying to this body because we have connected ourselves uh, partially, partially here and uh, to be a part of what's going on. And uh, 
He had this statement. You should never nap, rest, or sleep in the spiritual. You should always be woke. Unfortunately, that term has become more politicized than maybe it should be. Maybe grammatically it should be awake, right? Yeah, okay. We won't get into that. Luke 19. This is Palm Sunday. Okay? Palm Sunday. I wore my, my only shirt with palm trees. It's actually got... Got some in there, right there. There's a palm tree. I had another one dips. It looks like fish bones. Okay, but it has palm trees on it. So I wore my Palm Sunday. I tried to wear one of my happy shirts and uh, uh, to come here. Yeah, your pastor's not here. He was worried about what I might say otherwise this morning. I will let that slide. Those who have ears to hear heard. This is Palm Sunday, and we, it, Palm Sunday is a time where we, you know, like here we have these probably plastic palms, uh, and we, we recognize, and it was a celebration, uh, we celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem in the week leading up to his crucifixion. Okay. This was the, the time where he actually basically came as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords into Jerusalem, uh, not the way they normally expected, riding on a, a big, you know, Arabian charger, you know, some huge horse and all that, but lowly riding on a colt that never been ridden. And there's all kinds of, of lessons in that. Okay. And uh, we're not going to dissect that today. But we, we, we look at his, his entry and the people who, who lay down their, their, their clothes, you know, their, their, their coats and jackets and, and palm fronds. And you can read the story in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can read it in there. But Luke adds something. He addresses something that you don't see in the other ones the same way. That's what we read here in Luke 19. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. Uh, other, by other versions say, If you knew this day, what would bring peace? If you only knew what would bring peace. But now it's hidden from your eyes. For the days will come on you when your enemies will build a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. Anybody ever felt that way? They will crush you and your children among you to the ground. And they will not leave one stone on another in your midst. I was back and forth two different versions there. I apologize for that. Will not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. You did not know the time of your visitation. I title this simply the time of your visitation. The time of your visitation here. This is usually we read this this passage here and usually we use it uh, to drive home the point to people who've never known the Lord that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that the Lord is here. But as I read this, and as I listened to last week's message, I realized these two, two ideas merge together very well. I read earlier, and you can put it up right now, Isaiah 53. Actually, we'll come back to that in a second. You can take that off. Sorry about that. We'll come back to it. Okay. You know, we're, 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 I guess, on the tail ends of this COVID thing, right? And if it's shown us one thing, it actually shown us many things. One thing it's shown us is that the things that we assumed were normal and settled and unchanging have all they changed. Okay. But the thing that I've, I've seen as we come to the backside of this COVID thing, and it could, it could all come back as a, as a big thing again tomorrow. As quickly as it came, it could, could be gone. But I've realized that this world is grieving. 
They're either grieving the loss, actual loss of somebody. Deb's mom and dad came, moved in with us the end of last March. Uh, they promptly, after about a week or so, everybody got COVID. Hey, Deb and I thought we had the normal seasonal you know, yellow pollen allergies. Uh, really didn't affect us very much. Her dad a little bit more, but her mom had a lot of uh, health issues uh, that it compounded. She spent most of the month of April uh, either in hospitals in Chesapeake or then came home for a day and then went back to Outer Banks Hospital and then came home under hospice and she passed away May the 3rd last year. It was that quick of a, of a, of a thing for them. So maybe you actually lost somebody that you know, or a friend or a family member through COVID. Or you've known you know, you know, people who have suffered greatly because of it and not completely recovered still. But all of us have suffered loss of life as we knew it. Loss of things that were normal and, and every day and, and maybe it was the way your church operated. I mean, you lost your Wednesday night things because of COVID. And we've, we lost the way we did things. And that's not always a bad thing. Okay? It's not always a bad thing. But Deb and I have been talking about it. And we realize that there is a, there is a, a I guess the word is a Paul, P-A-L-L. There is a covering. There is a cloud of grief over this whole world. Where can you go to get away from COVID? Maybe like certain parts of the Gobi Desert or the Arctic or someplace in Antarctica. Uh, but the problem is you can't even get there without having to deal with COVID restrictions and things like that. This whole world has been affected by it. This whole world is grieving over this one thing in some way. And we're grieving the loss of of norm, normality, of a normalcy, something that, that, that we've been familiar with. There's, there's been change in our life, and, it, and it, we don't like it necessarily. As I began to think about that, I realized that everybody on this earth is grieving in some way. Everybody on this earth is suffering loss in some way. There's, never, there's nobody that I come in contact with that in some aspect of their life there is not grief, Sorrow, pain, loss. Maybe it's just like me, you're getting older. And that knee doesn't work the way that one does. And that one didn't work in a whole really great. Okay? And certain things don't recover. I was talking the other day about, you know, we, we've been doing some work. And, yeah, it used to be you throw stuff in the back of the pickup truck and you go to where you're going to dump it and you get up there and you get it out. Then you just you hop on down. Mm -mm. I don't hop on off of that thing anymore. Okay? That is called a step, not a hop. Okay? Things don't recover the same way. We don't bounce. When you get a little older, you don't bounce and, and like you did when you were younger. Of course, the reason we don't bounce now at this age is because we did stupid stuff when we were younger and we didn't think about it. And we just jumped off the back of the pickup truck and like, don't worry that you need, did a little thing. You, you, you want it. Everybody has some loss in their life. Everybody's grieving. Everybody is. There's nobody that's not. In this Isaiah 53, you can go there now. Okay? He is despised. So I threw, I threw you guys off. Threw you a fake on that one. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows. And acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Oh God. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Did I give you the rest of it also? Okay, we'll go to the next one. But he was wounded for our transgressions. See, here's here's our message for Palm Sunday here. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to His own way. And the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Amplified says, In fact, He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows and pains. Verse 6 in the Amplified, it says, All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned each one to his own way. But the Lord has caused the wickedness of us all, 
our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing to fall on Him instead of us. See, when Jesus walked into Jerusalem, it says He wept. He looked at the city and He wept because they didn't recognize the source of peace, the source of wholeness, the source of... And that word peace, is, is, is the, the Hebrew is, is shalom, which means the way things are supposed to be. Wholeness, completeness, functioning the way it was designed by God. Completely fulfilling every, every bit of itself the way it's supposed to. Absolute perfection. Shalom. Peace. It's the way God created the world. He created it in perfect shalom. Peace. Man, kind, man and woman together were fulfilling their, their, their created purpose. They were working. They, work is not a result of the fall. The thorns and thistles, the achy knees, the busted backs, those are, okay? But not the work. Work. We're, we're created to work. It's in Genesis. You can read that. Take dominion over the earth, okay? We were created in perfection. But sin separated that from us, us from that shalom, that perfection. And Jesus looked at Jerusalem. And he wept. He wept. Because they didn't grasp what was available to them. They didn't get a hold of what was, what was there for them. And when we read this prophecy in Isaiah, we see this is exactly what was available. That our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing, was the, the penalty for that was going to be paid for. That, that, that our wickedness... The, the, the price was paid for that. was going to be paid for that. This is a prophecy back hundreds of years prior to it. And that, that, that our wounds, are, that, that every result of sin could be done away with and perfect peace could come. And Jesus says, you're not getting it. You're not recognizing it. But you know what? We're here today and we do. We've sung the songs that talk about it. We rejoiced about it today. We, we understand the concept of, I'll give you the, okay, here it is, spoiler alert. That thing is going to move. Okay? It's going to be gone next week. Okay? It's not going to be there. Alright? So, sorry if I blew it for you guys. You know, man, I was wondering what's going to, that's what's going to happen. Sorry, blew it for you. Okay? We know the story. And you and I have experienced that. We have tasted, Amen. tasted, just like this cold, cold, this, you, know, there's, I, oh, you can't even hear, there's ice in there, it's cold, it's good, is this making you thirsty? Yeah. <sighs> That's the idea. That's the idea. That's why these worship people come up here, and they don't just get up there and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And dingy 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 and and bing bing bing. No, they give themselves to it. There's only so much you can do with the trombone. I recognize that, okay? Or you're gonna kill people, all right? But I see you. You're up there, and you're 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 not just like mmm mmm mmm. Okay, you're doing. You you. I can see you worshiping God while you do it. And this is just a vessel for it. You don't just sit up here and go dingy 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 on the tambourine, okay? All right? No. No, no, you're, there's, there's, there's worship going on with that. And you don't just stand and go, nee, 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 nee. I've been in churches like that, okay? No, you don't. You give yourself to it. And you wish, you wish this thing was on wheels and you could, you know, you could like move and, 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 and go around and, and do it. Because what are you trying to do as worship leaders? They're, they're instilling in each one of you that ah, thirst for something. That's what that's all about. That's what it's all about. Because He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. And this world is hurting. This world is hurting. First, we need to, to truly grasp the, the, the validity of this passage. That's why I love it says, it, it, it says in the New King James, Isaiah 53 verse 4, Surely... He has borne our griefs. Not just, you know, yeah, He might... Have. No. Absolutely. Without question. The Amplified says, but in fact, He has borne our griefs. That means He's carried them. 
He has carried our sorrows and pains. He is that Prince of Peace. He is that Comforter. He is the Great Physician. He is all of these things in our lives. But what about out there? Does this world recognize the day of visitation? And see, this is where I, I saw this connection between last week and this week. Because a church, and I'm not talking about Source Church Incorporated. I'm talking about the church universal. Okay? Alright? Your pastor talked about that. I thought he did a, did a phenomenal job last week. One of the best messages I've heard in ages. He talked about that. He wasn't, he wasn't poking, okay, that this group is, is twice dead and plucked up by the roots and going to hell and, and all that. That wasn't it at all. He talked about, though, Christians who are asleep. Members of the body of Christ who are asleep. What, what he talked about there. And, and I wonder, does Jesus still look over the city and weep? Here we are on Palm Sunday, and we, we talk about His triumphal entry. There He is, and, and I'd love to think that I was one of the ones that was throwing down palm fronds or, or, or their cloaks, but I also wonder how many of those same people in a couple days are going to be going, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! I guarantee many of the same ones were doing that because they just got caught up in the crowd. It's easy. You know, when you're asleep, it's easy to go along with the flow. When you're asleep, when you're one of those that are napping and sleeping and taking a little rest like you talked about last week, it's easy to get caught up in the crowd. And, and when they're going, Hosanna, Hosanna, we go, yeah, 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 Hosanna. Isn't this awesome? And then as the crowd shifts and goes, crucify Him, crucify Him. You're right there with them going, crucify Him, crucify Him. When you're asleep, you just, you don't have to think. You just kind of flow along. <laughs> oh, yeah, just kind of. That's, what are they doing now? Oh, yeah, we're throwing stones. Okay, good. We'll throw some stones here. But no. I wonder, this, this is the thing that came to me early this morning, actually yesterday. Does Jesus still look over the city and weep? Because they don't know what's available to them. Your neighbors, people around you, people you work with, people that you may live with, people in your own household. Do they not know what's available to them? Do they not grasp that there's hope? That there is an opportunity for peace in their life? Because, like I said, every human being is hurting. We hurt. Every one of us. Just because you got the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you don't hurt anymore. Jesus hurt. Jesus hurt wept. Jesus felt grief. Jesus was a man acquainted with sorrows and grief and hurting and suffering. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you don't struggle with things. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you don't hurt and have pain. Matter of fact, there's more promises that you will have tribulation, that you're going to live this life of just, oh, everything is wonderful. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Okay? That's what you read on the label. It's the wrong advertising. It, it's a lie. But oh God. Does Jesus still, is He today, as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, I wonder, is He still looking over the city and weeping because they didn't know the time of their visitation? Is He wondering, if you'd only known the source of peace in your life, if you'd only known that, you would have turned to Him. Does he weep because they're missing out on the peace, the wholeness that he wants to bring to their lives? Maybe some of us are here today. Maybe you're missing out on it. You've kind of tasted a little bit of it. But but you think there's more. And guess what? Here's the here's the here's the awesome thing of God. There's always more. Amen. There is always more. I've been around some some church groups. I've man, my my Church background runs the gamut, okay? From I was I was I was kind of 
brought up in an, in an Episcopal church, which was very, here's the, here's, the, here's the religious word for you, liturgical, okay? That means you followed a very set liturgy. Some great people, awesome people I knew. But that, that's like one style, okay? And then I, I was kind of like strayed from all that when I was younger, and then, but then came back and God you know, got a hold of me, and we were in a red-hot, fiery, Pentecostal type thing. Okay. I mean, you talk about tongue-talking, apostolic, holy rolling, aisle running, chandelier swinging. Yes, there we go, okay? Yeah, type, okay? I'm talking. We used to have a song. I'm a one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy rolling, born again, heaven-bound believer in the liberating power of Jesus' name. Been washed in the blood, sanctified by the Spirit. I believe in holiness, and I suggest that you do the same. I was set free at a Pentecostal altar on my knees. Pardon me if I am not ashamed to be a one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy rolling, born again, heaven-bound believer in the liberating power of Jesus' name. Sing that real fast. And that's how you did it. You do it like slow, and then you get faster and faster and faster. Everybody shout. So I've been that. I pastored a Baptist church for three years. Believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I've, I've like, I've, I've seen... I have seen the spectrum of it. And I know that there's one answer. It's Jesus Christ. And here's the beauty of it. There's no limit to Him. Because every one of those groups thought they had it as groups. We've got all there is of God. What a, what a ridiculous thing to think. There is always more of Him. Man, those Pentecostals thought, man, once you got once you got baptized and you got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues, man, you had it all. You were completely filled. Hogwash, to quote a old pastor of mine. Okay? Hogwash. There's always more of God to get. There's always more to experience of Him. There's always more that you can have of Him. That's the, that's the beauty of it. And for a human being to think that I got it all is absolutely ridiculous. But the beauty is there is as much as I hunger and thirst for. There is as much as I want. There is as much as I'm just that I want to, I want to be filled and bent and flow and experience of God. There's never a limit to it. The only limit is the one I put on it. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more for us in this room here today. But what about those out there that have no concept? Or maybe they've heard about Jesus a little bit, but not. Does Jesus still look over our city and weep because they're missing out on their peace, their wholeness that He wants to bring to their lives? Does He weep because both those in the city and His people fail to recognize the day of visitation, the time of visitation? So here's how we connect last week. People out there that don't really know Him, they don't recognize Him. But how often do we have interactions with people and we fail to acknowledge that God is there right then? You see, I love this. I, mean, I love this place and the building and all we do here. But our problem as humans is we try to limit God into, I can't say four walls, there's like 867 walls in this joint. <laughs> I've been doing some work in here and I've found lots of them, okay? And the more I, I, I almost hesitate to open the door, it's like, what's yeah. behind that one? Oh, there's door number three behind that one. Yeah. And I'm not going back there. That one's sketchy. Yeah. Okay? Sure. <laughs> but we limit God to this building. And we limit God to this time. And we limit God to this place. And we limit God to maybe a few people. See, we keep putting God in a smaller and a smaller box. Constantly, we put Him in a smaller and smaller box. We limit Him time-wise. Maybe you don't have a church building like we don't with cross-culture community. We don't have a building. Okay? So we, 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 we work with people's families and individuals and different places, but we we'll still sometimes want to limit Him to Sunday and Thursday Facebook Live broadcast or something. We still want to, li we still want to limit God. And God's saying, no, 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 no. If you only understood the peace that I'm here to bring to you. But we don't recognize that. You know, I see sometimes on Facebook, I know we're going to be stuffing eggs here in a minute, stuffing your faces and eggs. Faces with the pizza 
eggs with the candy thing. Okay. I don't want to talk to Cindy, I wouldn't go real long. Don't put the pepperonis in the candy things. You're going to ruin somebody's Easter if you do that. Okay. You're going to ruin it. What we have, this world, is hungry for. Yeah, I see on Facebook sometimes, and it's a great thing, you know, to uh, an encouragement to recognize or to just to say, you've seen it in different ways, but basically it comes down to you never know what somebody's struggling with. So be careful how you react to them, okay? Have I seen something similar to that on Facebook or Twitter or whatever your thing is? Something similar to that that you never know what struggles a person has, so cut them some, you know, maybe cut them some slack today, something like that. And sometimes we wait to find out in a person's life what their deal is. We'll be, don't raise your hands on this one, but have you ever been around somebody and, and, and you've been a little bit, impatient with them and then you find out something going on in their life and you go oh man I feel bad now I, I'm cutting cut them a little bit of patience a little bit of slack okay you get young people that you know you, you got stuff going on in your life and sometimes we think well you know they're young people they ought to have their acts together they ought to be doing good and we, we, we get a little impatient with 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 them, okay? And to me, a young person's anybody under like 97, okay? So we get, we get a little impatient with them sometimes, and then we find out maybe about their home situation or some things going on, and then we feel a little bad, and we, we say, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, I need to be a little bit patient today for them. How about if we change the way we look at things? How about if instead of Jesus weeping, saying they don't understand the day of their visitation. How about maybe if today, on this Palm Sunday, we start to have a transforming of our minds, the way the Scripture talks about. Okay? A renewing of our minds. That we begin to look at every single human being as somebody grieving, hurting, struggling. And recognize that this moment... When I walk up to somebody, whether I know him or not, that all of a sudden this moment is a time of her visitation and my visitation. Amen. This moment is. And it doesn't mean you've got to walk up and say, here, I've got this little track I want to give you and, and please come to our church. No. No, that's, that's, that, that, you're, you're missing the point. But recognize this is a divinely ordained moment of God. That this moment right now, whether I know you or not, whether I'm working on your house or, or I'm, I'm, I'm running into you over wherever, that this is a time of the Lord's visitation. If we are His body, His bride, His family, His children, if we are His feet and hands in this world, then every time I run into somebody. That is a time of the Lord's visitation into their life. And what did He extend to us? Grace, mercy, peace, encouragement, joy, hope. And instead of waiting to find out if they have something that I deem bad enough for my patience, Maybe I should recognize, you know what? The Lord's patient with them. I need to be. Because this is a time of His visitation into their lives. It's a time of His visitation into my life. And when I come into contact with somebody else, it's their life as well. Oh! I had this, I had this image when I read the Scripture today of the Lord still weeping. Still weeping. Looking out over, he looked out over Jerusalem then, in his natural physical body, and he wept. What's his body now? We are. I believe he still looks out over his people and weeps because they don't, they don't grasp this time of his visitation and the opportunity for peace in their life. You know, I want to 
share your story and I'll probably get it all messed up. The other day, Deb and, and a friend went out for a walk. They're going to go on. Now, just, I'm going to say what they went on. Okay, They're going to go out and walk and pray. They weren't going out on a prayer walk. Okay, And the only problem I have with prayer walks is we have an agenda. Don't we? Right? We're going to go out and we're going to walk and we're going to pray for this neighborhood. And Okay, I'm sure I've done it, okay? So and maybe this church has done it and there, there's, there's a legitimacy to that. But we have an agenda, okay? We have an agenda when we do that. They were going out and walking and praying. And they walked and they walked and they were way over on the other side of the highway even, okay? And they happened just to run into somebody. You know what they talked about? Chickens. Wood pallets. What else to talk about? Anything? Flowers, probably. A cool bathtub. So she had one outside with stuff in it. Talked about a cool bathtub. There was nothing else on their mind right at that moment. Okay? They just talked to this lady about the stuff she was out there working outside. And they're just talking. They didn't go with an agenda. But they had been in prayer. So they were in tune with the voice and the Spirit of God. They didn't walk up and say, okay, we're going to talk to this lady and wait for our time to go. Here's the Would you come to our church? Do you know Jesus? Huh. Matter of fact, they were getting ready to walk away. Right? Am I right? And just, how, how did it, how did it, Did you all hear that? She said, it's amazing that you would come and pray for me on this day. There was something specific about that day they were out there. And again, they didn't go out with this agenda. God help us if people become an agenda. God help us if the kingdom of God becomes a task and an agenda and people become a a project. God help us. But we do that a lot. Because projects are easy. People are difficult to work with. But as Jesus looks out over this city and weeps because they don't understand the day of their visitation, see if we can bring some joy to Him and start to look at every human being as a child of God created in His image no matter how, how they may look to you, no matter what their, their way of living is to you, 
no matter what their politics are to you or their or or anything no matter the way they they may no matter the things they struggle with and that they're addicted to no matter what they are children of God created in his image what if we looked at them as his children who are grieving and recognize you know what the one who's in me is a man of sorrows and acquainted with their grief he knows their grief and we just simply love them we simply extend grace and mercy and not wait to find out their story again this is this since the other day this has convicted me immensely because I'm the one that'll sit there and go all right I'll, I'll give you some slack. Let me hear what's going on, and then I'll I'll get the jury together, and we'll decide is how tough your life is bad enough to warrant my uh, sympathy and empathy and mercy and patience and grace, or is it like oh come on, put on your big boy panties and you know get on with life, suck it up, Buttercup, and let's go. No, no. Thankfully, the Lord never did that to me because. I never went to a cross. I was never beaten with rods and stones and chains and scourged and you know like Paul was. Or I didn't experience any of those things. And the Lord could have said, "You know what? Your, your struggles are so minor. <laughs> Suck it up. Come back to me when you get your act together." He didn't do that to me. I can't do that to anybody else. The Lord wept when He looked at the city. I want to see Him look out over the city and go, "Yes, I grieve for those people out there." would look at my people. They get and recognize this time of my visitation. Proverbs 3, one of the more common, well-known scriptures in all the Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, this is the uh, this Amplified one. That's cool. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. And He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. I love this right here. In all my ways. You know what that's talking about? All of my daily walking arounds and livings. No. Recognize and acknowledge Him. Recognize that today is the day of His visitation. And He will direct, make straight my paths. He will guide me and lead me and direct me. And He'll be able to look out over a city without weeping. Because He'll know I'm there and they're getting it. They understand and they're receiving my peace. Worship folks, come on up here. Start leading us into some of that awesome stuff, okay? Let's have something snappy. I don't know what you planned on. Can I do a, Can I do an audible here? Something awesome and snappy like you did earlier there that was really cool. And whatever, just something, something snappy. Okay. Let's stand. Let's stand. God is asking for a change in us. I love. I, I use the scripture all the time. Romans twelve. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. That's what we're doing today. Again, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I love the two twelves, Romans 12 and Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's, 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 have the, let's, let's let there be today. We're going to pray as we begin just to worship Him. We're going to pray for a renewing of our minds.
that we would recognize that every moment is the time of His visitation. It wasn't limited to this day in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. It wasn't limited to that time in a city as He, as he came in on that colt and looked out over the town. It wasn't limited there. But today and tomorrow and Tuesday and Thursday and whatever day and whatever time is the time of His visitation. And He is there. He's in you and wants to work through you. You've never experienced this in your own life. He's available today. Guess what? Today is the time of your visitation. If you want to be filled with more and more and more of His Spirit, ask. Ask. It's as simple as that. Ask. And He will do that. He's not a respecter of anybody. He'll fill you. His altar is open as we begin to worship Him. But let's, let's go to Him. Let's worship Him right now. And if you want more of God, you can come up here and we'll all gather around you and pray for you. Okay? But God is available today to change hearts and minds. It's what He wants to do. Lord Jesus, we love You and we thank You. We're going to worship You now, God. We're going to give ourselves to You. When we're done here, head on back to fill eggs and eat pizza. Okay? Probably, probably there by now. I gave her enough time to get the pizza man here. All right. So we're, we're, we're going to do that and have a great time in that. Today is our time of visitation. And so is tomorrow. Let's worship. Thank you, God. Praise God. Our prayer team will come up.